Hello, I welcome today Dr. Sarfaz Khan Niazi. The world knows him as the most interesting man revolutionizing the healthcare. I know him the most interesting man on earth. Welcome. So Dr. Thank Niazi, you. Thank you, Iswan. So, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Niazi, uh, considering the pandemic situation that have come upon us, how long uh, would it take to end the lockdown? Especially considering the Pakistan situation in terms of spread and the way we are management managing it. You know, uh, it's almost a rare times in our lives uh, that we are facing this lockdown. Uh, the last pandemic was more than 100 years ago. So it is something that very few of us actually understand what does it really mean. Uh, you cannot uh, end it too soon. And I'll give you an example, okay? In 1918, uh, uh, at first we lost uh, 20 million people. And then in New York and other places they said, it's too much lockdown, let's get out. They did. And then went back to lose another 30 million people. Now, before I give you the number, that was 50 million people died out of a population of 1.8 billion then. It will be equal to 200 million people today if the same thing happens because that uh, Spanish flu just got out of control. But it's still, the only reason it stopped was that we were able to go back after we learned the lesson that we cannot control it. So for most of the minds, uh, it's a very unusual uh, uh, practice. Okay, how can I lock myself down? Okay, what will it do? The fact is that if, uh, if you do not separate yourself, if you don't stop the chain, uh, it can literally annihilate the entire mankind. There's no doubt in my mind, okay? It's, but I think we have to uh, uh, educate people about the, uh, the, the severity of it and the real potential of it, okay? Um, so there's a cycle that takes place, okay? Once you go on the lockdown, there is a six weeks to eight week cycle, okay, before you begin to taper off and then it goes down because you have really choked uh, the transmission part of it, okay. This uh, virus is not a living entity, okay, it's just a piece of DNA, okay. If you can cut off the supply, it will come out. So I don't, at least I don't foresee um, for another about month and a half before we begin to see. Uh, uh, a much better uh, opportunity to go out. But we have also adopted different means now. We have uh, a new lifestyle, okay, which will allow us to go out and have partial lockdown. Uh, but we are looking at another two months before anything can happen. So in Pakistan, countries like Pakistan, uh, where are low resource, low and middle income countries, uh, where affordability is a key concern while doing NPC. And so where would uh, we invest uh, as a nation, uh, as, a, as a national strategy uh, for either it would be or how uh, uh, prioritize it would be from prevent, diagnose, treat, cure, recover, PPEs or interventional devices such as ventilators. So what's your take on it? You know, um, it's, it's most unfortunate that, uh, uh, that the uh, nations that do not have enough resources will end up suffering more, okay? There's no doubt about it, okay? And uh, lockdowns are perhaps the, uh, will leave uh, an indeterminate loss to people, okay? It is one of those decision-making quandary that you, you'll, uh, you know, it will be damned if you do, if you, and it will be damned if you don't, okay? No matter what you do, you always lose it, okay? Going back to where should we invest, you know, I think uh, um, the, 
But if the history bears out, okay, the only reason we were able to control Spanish flu, um, there were no ventilators or other thing available then either, okay, by the way, is through a process of uh, separation, okay. If you do nothing, let's put this way, okay, let's say there's no hospital anywhere in the world, okay. If you only have a separation, yes, more people will die, absolutely, but it will come to end, okay. So my suggestion is that um, uh, we should emphasize more on uh, the prevention of it, uh, educate uh, people uh, not to risk just only their lives, but the lives of others also. That concept has not gone through. Even in, in US, you know, there are a lot of people protesting, oh, it's my right to go out. It's not your right to go out to infect other people over there. So I think the, the bigger investment should come in educating and uh, providing them um, the personal devices or personal equipment that they can use, mask and other things if they're going out on a routine basis, educate them on the hygiene, why is it important? You know, if you can educate somebody really good, okay, they will follow it. Otherwise, we are, as a human beings, are always skeptical of okay. it. What we don't see, we don't find it harmful, okay? So um, the cost of maintaining a treatment and the cost of maintaining patients is extremely high. The best thing is to prevent it. We will not be able to prevent all the deaths, but at least once we can break the chain, I think we will have an option of getting out of it uh, soon. Great. So uh, this, uh, uh, it has already started to become uh, evident that post-COVID, uh, post uh, the aftermath of the current situation that we have, we'll, we are looking at a different lifestyle, how the business used to work, how we used to have uh, social gatherings, how the factories used to operate, and most importantly, how the entire uh, uh, professional and personal life uh, goes on. Yes. I think um, there's no doubt in my mind that uh, uh, in the aftermath of um, uh, this pandemic, uh, we'll have a different life, number one. I think we'll be a lot more knowledgeable, a lot more aware of uh, uh, the pandemics and epidemics. There will be new drugs coming out, new vaccines coming out. Um, I'm. I'm very confident that the FDA will approve the first RNA vaccine. That's the only a plausible solution to any of such uh, pandemics. Okay, It's not the regular vaccine, it's the RNA vaccine, which is synthetic vaccine. There are six or seven of them under clinical trial. So that will be a big breakthrough. I think uh, people will become forever sensitized to the, uh, the hygiene of it. Uh, we never thought about how uh, the transmission takes place with okay? these two ten fingers that we have are, uh, are killing ourselves okay how do we do these things okay so there will be always be need for uh, um, means of uh, you know disinfecting and, and and the cleanliness that will come but the unfortunate part is Rizwan, is that in a society okay where people have difficulty affording the food okay all these things become luxury okay i think survival uh, potential is so uh, different across the globe, okay? And I think this is the most ironic part of it, okay? But at the same time, okay, we have survived as a species for so many years, okay? Uh, not because we had any medical uh, help or, uh, or medicine, but because our body itself is where the, uh, the cure comes from. So there will be an increased awareness of how to strengthen our immune systems. Okay, I think that's uh, there will be new drugs that will help us maintain it, and they don't necessarily have to be very expensive drugs. But the whole system of treatment modality, uh, Pakistan has the issue with infectious diseases always. Okay, I think if we can um, uh, benefit from the next generation of RNA vaccines we can easily eliminate all infections. There's no question about it. You know who does it? Bacteria have a system already in there, okay? 
and bacteria have been living for long, long time, much longer than human beings, okay? You know why? Because they get attacked by viruses, all right? And they have a system that uh, knows how to create instantly a machine to kill it, okay? As, you know, those are the called cast proteins that they have in there, okay? So someday, uh, in not in distant future, okay, we may be able to produce new, new products. And this pandemic has raised the awareness to the point, okay, where uh, we may be just able to break the, the paradigm of the chemical drugs and the active treatment and we'll be more on a passive side, okay, which is where I think we need to be. So what new drugs and uh, are, are, are being tested at the moment to prevent uh, the next uh, pandemic? Well, uh, most important, of course, are uh, there are at least a half a dozen, actually more than half a dozen, half a dozen are in active uh, clinical trial. These are mRNA vaccines. Okay, uh, taking different parts of uh, uh, what you call uh, the uh, the DNA of the virus to produce uh, a, uh, a a system where the body can produce itself the the antibodies. Okay, uh, if one of them gets approved, I think we would have won the big battle because. FD has never approved an RNA vaccine. So this is the first time it's going to happen. Second thing is very important is that there are a lot of antibodies that we have, okay, that can possibly have a cross-reactivity uh, to the antibodies. There will be a search out there for what you call a universal antibody that you can induce anytime. A, an antibody that's flexible enough so it will, it will attach to any antigen, okay. And third thing is that I think we have learned uh, that uh, there were some studies done that plasma transfusion of those who were affected has been very effective, which means that we can identify the antibodies and we can take them back to a recombinant manufacturing, let's say in uh, Cho cells, and produce these antibodies in, in a bulk load. And that is a very simple and easy process. So I think a lot of innovation will come but I think as, as the history will bear out, okay, uh, most of the innovation will come from small companies. As the case is, okay, last 30, 40 years, okay, I don't think the big pharma has been able to produce anything. It's all a small company that produce it and then they take over, okay. So I see a lot of innovation. Uh, I see something good coming out of this pandemic, okay, and for mankind. And um, we are still very young, but Certainly, we're looking at next 100 years, okay, when we will be having a very different discussion as to what is the issues today. Yes, with innovations, I would uh, pick up uh, or, uh, from, 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 from your response on the question that uh, the future is not uh, how large the company is, it's uh, how fast the company is. But I think I, this is exactly where the small companies beat out the, all the big pharma or big companies in general, okay? The bureaucracy is, is, the, is our biggest enemy. And it's not just in companies, okay? Any country, I think uh, when, when the British left, okay, India, Pakistan, they gave us a gift of bureaucracy that we're still suffering through, okay? And I think what happens once you become big, okay, you also become bureaucratic, okay? And th then you, you hinder yourself. The decisions are not made fast enough. Uh, there are other considerations which are more important than the end, end point, okay? So in my opinion, uh, this will be a, a boom era for a small innovative innovations companies. There will be plenty of money available. I think uh, there's no shortage of money for venture uh, uh, groups. Uh, but now as they see the need for innovation, you know, we, we had gotten so used to what we had, uh, but now suddenly we find that despite everything, okay, we find ourselves so helpless. Like you mentioned, okay, what do we do now? You know, uh, do I eat uh, uh, a bread or do I take the vaccine or medicine? How do I survive without uh, going out to uh, work? Okay? How long the lockdown will... These questions were never, never discussed. I tell you what, last year, six months ago, nobody even talked about it. Now they're talking about it, and this will have a very big impact on the, 
the next uh, uh, generation of drugs and this and the companies. But again, I totally agree with you. Okay, uh, there's never been a better time where innovation will be respected more than it is today. Great. So, uh, what is the one most important lesson that we have learned from this pandemic? Okay, I will take it on more on a philosophic side. Okay. Um, I think the, the biggest lesson that we have learned is that there's a pharmacy which lives inside our body and that is open 24 seven. But we go out and bring the drugs. This is time now to go back to our own pharmacy and see how we can make it as the best possible source of treating any ailment. And of course, it also teaches you humility, okay, that no matter where you are, okay, uh, this is a small piece of DNA fragment, okay, which is not even alive. It doesn't have a heart or mind. It's, it's not like a bacteria, okay, it's just a piece of chemistry, okay, and it's capable of destroying the mankind. So it teaches you humility, it, it teaches you to focus on our own body. And I think there's a lot of uh, um, history and understanding on how to prepare your body. I'm talking about going into some of the practices that were very common 100 years ago, but now they have lost, okay. Uh, meditation and thinking and all those things will come back to uh, ministry. What, what is your uh, message for uh, in, in people, uh, people like us uh, who are uh, professionals in healthcare, uh, people who are in the regulatory side, public policy makers, and then general public at large, uh, that uh, they can do uh, to, so that we have, uh, we, we, we have a minimal uh, exposure to the risks uh, uh, that we are facing and that we anticipate to face. You know, Isman, uh, the best uh, uh, understanding and uh, advice anybody can have, okay, is uh, first of all, uh, listen to professions only. What happens in the in the time of panic, okay, there are so many gurus come out, sprout like dandelions all over. We have one in, in the U.S., okay, his name is Donald Trump, okay. Uh, he, he's telling people to... Uh, drink Lysol and drink disinfectant and sit under UV lamp. Okay, but the the unfortunate part is that many people actually believe in him. So human mind is a very gullible mind. Okay, so one of the roles you have is to uh, teach that you know, there is a value to what I call the evidence-based science. Okay, evidence-based medicine. You know, um, you, you see, you, you drive in Karachi, you see so many people selling things. Uh, medicines on the line and actually people actually use them you know without realizing that they cannot possibly be uh, of any help okay so i think uh, professions like you the 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 responsibility lies in educating people giving them the right information and keeping them from uh, getting swayed by th they are gullible people okay you know if you don't know the science okay you just believe uh, whatever you hear uh, repeatedly, okay. So you have to keep the what you call the fake news out. Medicine is very hard science, okay. It's not a conjectural science, okay. There is no room for, uh, okay, let's try it out. What happened? That's called anecdotal medicine that we did 200,000 uh, 200, years ago, not anymore, okay. So the goal is to educate, okay, and leave it into the hands of people who know the science, not the politicians, not the uh, opportunistic people, not those who are trying to make a buck overnight, okay? Otherwise, you will not be able to protect the health of your people. I totally agree, and uh, I would like to expand on this, that uh, Trump is a state of mind. It's not a person. It's not a personality. <laughs> uh, the state of mind can be in any country, by can be adopted, or can somehow some, uh, uh, yeah, unfortunately, 
uh, in any so-called leaders. And, uh, that's a super problem at this moment. Uh, thanks for your time. And uh, we look forward to hosting you next time. Okay. Very happy to be. Thank you. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Uh, Trump.